Good day to you, my friends, and welcome to Hacking Self Stories. I'm your host, Dean Booty. Today's going to be a little bit of a different episode. I'm going to put, uh, postpone my next interview. Uh, we've got an interview all lined up, supposed to be coming out with you today, but I realized that I hadn't um, done the the feedback from my quarter, and somebody got in touch with me asking me how I, how my quarter done. Was it was it not as good as I expected? Because I haven't done a show on the quarter figures, so I'm just going to move Zoom down, and I'm going to find these figures and go through them with you guys. Because I think it's important. It's really really important to keep yourself accountable and to have these quarterly figures. Yes, we need to look at weekly figures. Ish, obviously they're not as important as as the monthly ones because they they you see the the makeup and the trend, the trajectory that your business is going. But for me, I love going to the quarterly figures. The best part of my mastermind, without doubt, is the preparation that I have to do for the mastermind. It might take me uh, five or six hours to do, but the insights I get, and I get to see exactly the direction of the business. And I would urge, I would plead you guys to understand your figures, understand what makes up your figures and how, how you're performing in that quarter as well, and compare and contrast to previous quarters. Not necessarily the last quarter, because obviously it's it's a seasonal business. In the summer, we're busier than we are in the winter. So I always like to compare and contrast how we did this time last year and what's the revenue. Is it driving forward? Is it less? What's the reasons for this? And can we change? Because the great thing is, if you've got your handle on your numbers, I promise you, but you will see things quicker than other people. And so before a problem becomes a problem, a big problem, then you can change it. You can you can change directions. You can just iterate and you can move forward. And that's why it's so critical and important for me to go through my quality figures to make sure the company is going in the right direction. Obviously, a week's too small. It's a small sample size. A month, we can have good months. We can have bad months. But a quarter, we have got three months worth of data then. And for that data to be skewed or incorrect is less likely because there's more days, there's more weeks, there's more months than just looking at one month or one week. So that's why I love looking at quarterly figures. Okay, so let's have a, a quick go through then. Um, overall, the profit wasn't where I wanted it to be, but we had groundworks done. We had we had um, nearly 18,000 pound expenses on um, solicitors. And so they're all costs that we wouldn't have had if we wasn't doing the next part of our development if it wasn't doing Clough Road. So that, that 18 grand on solicitor's fees, we have to do it. We have to make sure that the contract was watertight. And yes, we paid one of the best in the business to make sure it was absolutely spot on. And you're probably thinking 18 grand, it was probably, uh, but you've got to remember that the problem is that we, there was a lot of works to go because we're right next to Greg's and we're right next door to um, Starbucks as well. So we, unfortunately, there's a lot of literature to go through. And so that's why the profit isn't as where I ex I wanted it to be, but they're one-off costs that we wouldn't have in the future. And they're not associated necessarily with the two storage facilities. They're, well, they're not. They're associated with the new facility. So there's like 30 grand worth of extra costs there. But this time we're doing things right. We're making sure that we've crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's. So in terms of net profit, I'm just going to go straight to net profit. Oh, and by the way, do you, do you guys have a culture? Because my culture is authenticity. Um, so we've got to be, authenticity is at the heart of everything we do. Never pretend, be proud of who we are. Never pretend, be proud of who we are. We, me and you are amazing. Believe in who you are. I love that. Integrity, always do the right thing, plain and simple, but oh so powerful. Personal growth, always be better than we were yesterday. But not as good as we will be tomorrow. Always be learning, reading, and educating yourself. Stand on the shoulders of giants. I love that phrase, stand on the shoulder of giants. That basically means that look at what's worked previously and use that and we can build upon that. Passion, be passionate about everything we do. Results come from passion. Be kind. A single, a single act of kindness throws out roots in all directions and the roots spring up and make new trees. Do the right thing at the right time. Be kind. And I love this one, challenge others, challenge upwards. So that means that anybody, anybody can challenge me and my decisions because I don't want to be in a place where I'm the boss and nobody challenges my decisions. I, I, will, I will be the person who makes the decisions, yes, but you can always challenge it because 
challenging my assumptions or my decisions or Angela's decisions and assumptions can only make us better as a team. And so I never want to be in a culture where, where somebody can't challenge me. Somebody can't give their point of, of view across because it's so, so important because I can have blinkers. We can all have blinkers from time to time. And so if, if somebody believes I'm doing something wrong, then yes, obviously, number one, you've got to be respectful. But I want you to bring that to me and tell me why you think I'm wrong. And then we can have discussion. Ultimately, I am still going to make the decision because I'm the leader. And, but I respect other people's opinion and I want to hear it. I want to hear my team's opinion of the things we're doing. And I want Angela to be exactly the same. Yes, she's the manager. She's going to make certain decisions. But I want other people to be able to challenge Angela's points of view and the way she thinks and processes things because that's the culture that we want because Angela could have blinkers on exactly the same as me. And then I want people to, to challenge James, who's the second in command. I mean, by the way, the wife works there. I want nobody to challenge a wife. Please, if you listen to this, Angela, James, Vanessa, do not ever challenge a wife. I will never challenge a wife. You never challenge a wife. And we're all going to be a lot happier. <laughs> she don't listen to this, so I'm all right. She don't listen to this. So challenge others, except the wife. <laughs> she, she only does two days. I'm only joking, by the way. We can, we can, we can somewhat challenge her. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> or am I? <laughs> I'm scared now. I'm really scared. Okay. So challenge upwards, always be respectful, but always say what's in your heart. We learn from be challenged. Your opinion matters. Boom. So there's my culture. Be authentic, integrity, personal growth, passion, be kind and challenge others. So we've got six core cultures that we want in this company. So um, let's have a look at my profits. So my profits this year, this quarter, so January, February, March, was, here we go, um, I know it's 60, 63,363 pounds. So if we carried on like that, let's have a look at exactly what we would make. 63,000, uh, where is it? 363 three, times by 12, uh, times by, divided by 12 times by four. So it would make a quarter of a million pounds, 253,452 pounds. But we know them figures are wrong. This next month, um, well, I want to hit 110,000 pounds. We'll go into what I want to do anyway. I want a net profit of 110 grand. That's my that's my aim. So that's what uh, the profit was. The profit for two sites was 63,000 pounds and 363 quid. So what did I want to achieve in the last quarter? Um I wanted to expand. Uh, the best way of doing this is to acquire new sites. That's what I put there. Um, but I've changed I've changed my tact a little bit. So that was ma major focus number one. It was to complete a site. I don't think I've made it public where I was completing the site. Um, and I wanted to complete that one. For whatever reason, one way, another two ways, three ways, we decided against that. And we've decided to go for but the best return on investment for me is to open a new site rather than buy that particular site. So we didn't do that one. Com major focus number two was complete lease for Clough Road site. And I will get into all the numbers as well, by the way, um, the quotes, conversions, etc. cetera. Uh, complete lease for Clough Road site in Hull. Um, done that, we've completed it. Uh, minor focus number one. So there's two major focuses. Minor focus was hiring a new member of staff. We did that as well. Um, look at my criteria for opening new sites. Yes. I've got an absolute nailed on criteria here. I've got it written down, but I obviously don't want to give you my master plan. <laughs> There's some things that I have to keep a little bit close to my chest because then, I mean, what, what works for me might not even work for you anyway. So yeah, I've got certain criteria that I'm looking for for new sites. And minor focus number three, design, design and build a fully automated process for move-ins and payments online. Um, and we haven't done that yet. We're ongoing. We're using Stora for our new sites, but our existing sites, we will be using um, our own platform. We're building that ourselves with our software engineers. And the reason why we're doing that is because it's going to be a little bit too hard and complicated for Stora, for us and Stora to integrate what we've already got. It's just too many moving parts and it just, it wouldn't work. So what we're going to do is build our own software and obviously that's quite expensive. So we'll have more costs, but that's the idea. We're going to, we're going to have um, an integrated bit of software that's going to be able to uh, do all the moving process for Beverly and Willoughby. And then for Clough Road and all existing new sites, we're going to be using Stora. Right. So the, the quarter in numbers, 
So quarter one, 2021, our revenue was £165,752. That was up from the quarter 2020, quarter one, 2020, by 53,155. Whoa! So our revenue is really scaling. It's really going up now. And the reason being is we're becoming more of a mature site. Um, and it's up from the quarter before. So quarter four, 2020, it's up by £10,135. So that's an extra £10,000 we're taking. That is incredible. I've just some, done some numbers. And I believe that this quarter will be even better. I believe we're going to be hitting around about £18,000 higher than that. So my aim was 175, but I believe it's going to be around, around about 183 at the minute, my revenues for this next quarter. So yeah, around about £18,000 more than the previous quarter, which in storage all should drop to the bottom line because there's no associated cost with that extra revenue. So it's a really good quarter in terms of revenue. It was up 53 grand from the year before, from quarter one. 2020 and up £10,000 from the previous quarter, quarter four, 2020. So £10,135. So good stuff there at Stormar. Beverly, because Beverly is a mature site. There's not much growth. Well, there isn't any growth. Uh, so the true period revenue was £35,439.03. It was up from last, the previous year, by £1,517. Pound. So a bit of a growth, and it was down from the previous quarter, from quarter one, 2000, uh, quarter four, 2020. It was down £261.42, so neither here nor there. So it was up on the previous year's quarter, the exact like for like in the previous year, quarter one, 2020, but it was down slightly, 261 quid from quarter four, 2020. So not much there. So overall, very, very positive stuff. Um, key takeaways. Um, here's my key takeaways. I'll read them out. We took 53,000 more in quarter one, 2020 than we did uh, quarter one, 2019. Uh, sorry, that should be, that's actually wrong. It's quarter one, 2021 and quarter one, 2020. So that's good. Um, Quarter one's revenue is normally less than quarter four's revenue. So I'm over the moon. We have started the year off strongly. Uh, that's at Stormore. Um, I love the Beverly site. We don't get a lot of quotes in comparison to Stormore. So very few move in and out. It's a fully mature site. So we don't have a lot of changes in revenue as it's long-term customers are in. Obviously, we've got our revenue management that we're still doing there. So obviously, it should see a growth every single year. This year, we'll see a big spike because we're focusing more on that. I'm clenching my fists and focusing more on that. Uh, we took £261 less, told you that. We took £1,500 more, we told you that. We did take a very small dip last year in quarter two and quarter three in terms of revenue at Beverly uh, last year. So it'll be very interesting to see if we can sustain the level of revenue. We, we already are doing, so we're doing good. Um, the landlord site is opening very, very soon. So it'll be interesting to see how, if, if at all, it affects us. Don't think it will do really. I think it's open now um, and it doesn't, doesn't really affect us. Uh, I've got here, I don't think it will uh, too much, but I but I guess you never know. I put. So ultimately, very, very strong um, numbers there. Uh, I put best quarter in terms of revenue, conclusion best quarter in terms of revenue. Obviously, uh, that hasn't been translated into profits because we've actually had associated profits. We've had associated expenses with future projects. So therefore it's, I suppose it's, what is it? R and D, um, research and development. So we've had a lot of research and development costs, which is over 30 grand. So, um, I've actually worked out here and I said that would be a net profit would have been over 110,000 pound if we wouldn't have had them associated with them R and D costs, research and development. So a very, very strong one, but it's good. It's good because we're reinvesting in the company rather than having profits and taxes. We're reinvesting in the company. I'm all for that. Um, I've put from quarter one, 2021 to quarter one, there has been an increase in quarter one, 2020. There's been an increase, um, increase in revenue from a combined sites of 55 grand. So that's good. I put this will continue because storage has a reoccurring business model. So it's exciting to see this year's revenue on that trajectory. Uh, the reason for this partly is because of the COVID situation. Yeah. More people are moving house. So yeah, we've definitely seen a COVID bump. There's no doubt about it. Uh, quotes and conversions, what I've learned, and I put, again, I feel very lucky to be in this industry because I'm, I've, there's a, maybe eight or nine different business owners that I'm presenting to. And 
I know that not everybody is in the very fortunate position that soft storage is in, but it's just com continued to produce results during this COVID situation. So I want to get that across because one, I don't want to see like a douchebag and a dick. And two, it's exactly how I feel. So we're very, very lucky and blessed. Uh, quotes are great. The most in quarter one ever. Um, an increase from quarter one 2020 to quarter one 2021, a 40% increase. 40% increase in quotes. That is bananas. Incredible. Um, don't get me wrong. We've been spending more on ads. I put the minute. Um, 10, uh, the minute 10,000. Oh, yeah, so with, with our increased ad spend, it's been £10,138 in quarter one compared to £6,402 in quarter one, 2020. And so that's a 58% increase, but it doesn't matter because we get a return on our investment. So yes, we've had a 40% increase in quotes, but the cost has gone up 58% for the ad spend on pay-per-clicks. But however, yes, the increase hasn't been exactly the same, but it's not its not apples and apples. You're not comparing apples and apples. So we're still getting enough bang for our buck. Um, here we go. The cost to acquire a customer has gone up from £134 from Google, uh, but my lifetime value of a customer is so is over £800. So the cost to acquire a customer has gone up to £134 from Google, but my lifetime value of a customer is way over £800. Uh, we moved in 16800 16,085 square foot in 2020. Um, let's have a look. I'm just going to check this because, uh, yeah. So in quarter one, bloody hell, that's a lot of square foot. That is a hell of a lot. Um, so in quarter one, 2021, we moved in 16,085 square foot. Holy shit, man. Holy moly. Uh, that is a lot. Uh, in 2020, it was only £8,905. That's an increase of 45%. So yes, our increase on quotes was increased by 40%. Uh, increase on year on year on the same quarter. Uh, that's 40% increase. Our increase on ad spends was 58% and our increase on square foot moving was 45%. What I should really do is see how much extra we are taking. It'd, it'd be interesting to see, but it probably won't be. And uh, Anyway, I, I digress. Uh, so it's an increase of 45, 45%. That is good. We gained 1,295 square foot in the quarter. Uh, we lost 965 square foot in quarter one, 2020. So we're gaining more. Uh, we gained, it was a positive quarter for us. And as we know, quarter ones can be a little bit in and out. Um, so instead of losing 965 square foot, we actually gained 1,295 square foot, which is good. It's damn good. Um, and we'll, we'll gain more than that as well this next coming quarter, obviously quarter two you'd expect to. So that is good. The negative side, we are losing a lot of square foot. Last, uh, last quarter, we lost 14,790 square foot. 14,790 square foot. That is the most we've ever lost in a quarter. The previous most was quarter four, 2020, and it was 13,129, uh, 25. I, I'm, we're obviously just over, we're, we're two thirds of a way into this current quarter and that has gone down significantly. I believe, I believe it has. I'm pretty certain it has because we couldn't have sustained them levels. <laughs> we'd have, we'd have lost. Um, I think it's gone down substantially. So that is moving in the right direction. So yeah, last quarter, we lost 14,790 square foot. Right. Um, what other standouts have we got? The negative side, there's a decrease. Uh, there's a decrease in chain because you acquire more long term customer. Uh, yeah, I'm talking, I'm, I'm trying to explain chain um, because, because obviously these people don't understand storage who I'm in the mastermind with. So I'm, I'm talking about the chain and you would expect chain to decrease once you have, um, once you're a mature facility. So the chain rate should go down. Uh, I put an example Beverly. Beverly has very, very little chain. Uh, quick takeaway. Um, found this from my accountant's reports and I wanted to share it quickly. Not one of my customers makes up over 0.9% 9, 9 of my overall revenue. So not, not even 1% of my revenue comes from uh, one single customer, which is fan daddy dodo. Uh, because obviously the more, if you've got a customer that makes up, you know, a big chunk, maybe 20% of your revenue, that is a bad situation to be in. I, I'd feel uneasy if I was any any business like that. 
But luckily, with us, because by the way, if if they leave, you've you've really lost twenty percent of your revenue. You've so you you you're working on you you're on eggshells a lot of the time. If something happens to that company, it might go bust or whatever. It might liquidation. It could anything could happen. And so we are very very lucky in that respect. And so my biggest customer makes up zero point nine percent of my overall revenue. To be honest, I thought it could be less than that, but we'll take it. We'll take that. Uh, ninety day rocks. Uh, so this is what I want to achieve um, in the next. Uh, do you know what? It's, it's changed somewhat as that. So I'll I'll read you the updated ones. Um, is there anything else from t- key takeaways? Uh, quotes and reservations. Let's just dig, d- dive into this a little bit more then, because I know you guys, a lot of people actually send me their comparisons and how they're doing compared to me in terms of quotes or reservations. <laughs> Most people are doing better than me <laughs> in terms of in terms of the quotes and. Uh, uh, the conversions. So yeah, I know you guys like it. So quotes were 672 quotes. That's how many quotes we got in the quarter. Reservations. I think we're already in front of that now. No, not quite. But it will go up again this this year, this month, uh, this quarter. I'll get it right some eventually. Uh, reservations was 166 uh, reservations. So that's a conversion rate of 24.7. So 24.7 quotes to reservations. We had move-ins, 146 move-ins. So we had a conversion rate of 21.73%. So a little bit down of where we want to be. We're getting so many quotes. Uh, and now we actually get to the stage where we're nearly full. We've only got 20 units left. So yeah, it's uh, it's getting to that point now where we're doing a lot of juggling. We're doing juggling, 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 like a, a circus act. So you'd expect maybe the quotes, uh, the move-ins, might, the percentages might go down if we can't actually help the customers. But I'm on it. I'm going to be developing the car park uh, more um, and having outdoor containers. A lot of outdoor containers now coming because we, we need it. I think I'm going to spend 40 grand or $40,000 maybe on some containers, outdoor units or something. Some Something we're going to do. We're going to do something anyway because we obviously want to maximize uh, our revenue. So yeah, overall, it's not, it's not bad. It's not Brilliant. Quotes to reservations, 24.7%, 20 to 25%, not bad. And quotes to move-ins was 20, 22% if we're rounding up. So not too bad at all. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? I've asked how you can help me. That's the mastermind. There weren't really a lot people can help me with in this because, as you guys know, storage is very, very much predictable. Oh, targets. Yes, let's get to the targets. So I put target at Beverly. Um, I want Beverly, I want to take 37,500. That'll be higher than than what we've previously taken, um, our previous highest. Let's have a look. Um, 37,500 divided by three equals 12,500. Uh, yeah, I should do it. We should do that. So 37, Beverly target is 37,500. This is all XVAT, by the way. And I put this will be our best quarter ever for Beverly. If we hit this target, I'll be over the moon, especially considering we have a new competitor. Do you know what? We're going to, I know we're going to, well, I'm pretty confident we're going to beat that unless we have a disastrous June, which I just can't, I can't see. We won't beat it by much, but we'll beat it. I think we'll beat it by 200 quid or so. 200 quid, we should beat it by. So over the moon there. Willoughby, 184. The target is 184 pound. This will be our best quarter ever, but you would expect that an increase in revenue because of the time of year. And obviously we're building all the time. So a big increase there, Bev, uh, Willoughby. But guess what? We're going to beat that one as well. Um, I'm, sh- I'm sure we're going to beat that one. Uh, 184. I just did the maths. But I've anyway, I, I've done the maths and I think I might have said something previously wrong to do with Willoughby's. Uh, figures in terms of how much I want the revenue to grow by. Let's have a look. I'm going to get that. That that didn't sound like a lot. Didn't sound like it said made a lot of sense there. Oh, maybe it was right. Yeah, maybe it was right. Um, so yeah, the the quarter one, uh, the revenue was 165, uh, 165,752 pound. And I said that uh, we, we would increase that. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to be increasing that by I said eight, I said on here eighteen thousand, but it won't be eighteen thousand. It'll be actually more than eighteen thousand. Uh, One hundred sixty-five thousand. Uh, let's have a look. I'm just gonna do a really quick maths, really, really quickly. For fifty-eight thousand five hundred plus sixty-five thousand four hundred plus uh, sixty-eight thousand. We'll go for sixty-eight thousand this month. <laughs> Whew. 
we might take 191,900 this quarter at uh, at Willoughby. That's that's where I think we'll be somewhere on there. Uh, so that I think we'll be. I think we'll be 191,900. So that will be an increase on the last quarter of 26,000. 26,000 extra. That's what we're on course for at the minute. And I put here net profit. I want the net profit to be 110,000. I don't know. I don't know because I don't know the associated cost of the R&D. And obviously, that is so, so important to me because obviously we've got the software, we've got the new sites, we've got, um, we've got uh, yeah, the software, the new sites, all the associated costs with that um, we've, we've got coming up. So, yeah, I want to. I want to actually come back to you and say, do you know what? The last quarter we netted over hundred hundred k in actual profit, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. I think we will do. I think we will do, especially with the increase in revenue. Um, let's have a look. I've got my that. So that's that's the aims for. Oh damn it! That's the aims for in terms of revenue. I'm just going to open that again. Open up pages. Here we go. Uh, what else is it? Major focus. Oh, yeah. So the major focus here. So I've got two major focuses. Um, I want to know what is happening with my Beverly site. I've got three options. One, buy it. Two, extend the lease. Or three, look for another place. I'm, I'm, I'm down on that. I'm really focused on that. Hopefully, it'll get back to me this, this week sometime, and I'll know more options there. Um, and major focus number two, my previous account and messed up my director's loan account substantially. I need to get to the bottom of it as it's massive implications on my personal tax and also corp tax, corporation tax. We've got to the bottom of it. It was messy. It was really messy. So we've done that. I've done the, I've achieved the two major focus, uh, minor focus, go through all changes to Ambalad, one of America's best self-storage operators suggested for my facility. For those of you who know, um, Ambalad came in and, uh, she had a look at everything. I, if if you got if I'm bad, I'm still doing it. I don't know if she is, but I would recommend anybody spend the time, spend the money. There's a lot of time. It's a big investment, but she will spend two hours on the phone with you going through her findings, and I promise you, it is money well spent without a shadow of doubt. Her insights are incredible. Don't get me wrong. There's some things that the Americans do, like administration fees. Very 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 few operators charge administration fees. She thinks we should charge administration fees. There's also refunds for customers. Uh, in America, you don't refund the customer. And we refund like 17 grand. She said, Dean, you're stupid. You shouldn't be, well, she didn't say them words, <laughs> but you shouldn't be refunding 17 grand. Um, and I'm still undecided on that one yet. And I know there is people in, in England who don't do refunds, but majority of people do. And do you want to leave a bad taste in your customer's mouth when they leave and stuff? There's pros and cons. So I still haven't decided, but there is... There is fundamental value in, you've got to pay. Please find somebody who's anybody. It doesn't matter if you're on the same level as them or you, you deem them less than you or just get somebody else's opinion. Honestly, whether it be somebody, I, I, I maintain everybody needs a business coach. You need a business coach because to have, to have a better business, you need to be a better businessman. And that's what this mastermind does for me. It makes me a better businessman. Not to finish the article by any stretch of imagination, but I am better than I was. Uh, previously. And so that is important to me. And I would also get somebody in the industry as well. Somebody who it can see what you're not seeing. It's, it is massive. So if anybody can afford Ambalad, then I would strongly, strongly recommend you do so because you will gain your money back without a shadow of a doubt. If she's doing it anyway, I don't know if she's doing it anymore. Um, I don't know if she did it just for us. I don't, I don't know. Um, so basically, yeah, go through that and uh, go through on Ballard's uh, video and see what changes I want to do. Um, I put, uh, yeah, it's interesting to challenge you. I put here, no, it's interesting to challenge your assumptions, but I, I, I have to remember what works in America, self-storage, it may not work in the UK, uh, but am I prepared to test as you don't know if you don't test? I still don't know the answer to that question. Like she wants me to display prices online and I don't know. Uh, minor focus number two is design a new website for Beverly. Hoo -hoo, it's looking good. Uh, I spent about 10 grand on it. <laughs> but like I keep saying, websites are a bloody investment. It's not a cost. It's an investment. Again, yeah, some extra costs that I haven't associated. So maybe I won't hit 110 grand because it's R&D. It's research and development. It's so, so critical. You've got to improve. You've got to improve all the time. Never rest on your laurels. Um, yeah, so I've got one of the, the world best developers uh, Greg Merrilies, um, 
studio1design.com who is doing it. He is without doubt one of the best in the world. Uh, his team are doing it for me and it looks, mwah, oh, you what? It looks absolutely brilliant at the minute. Um, so hopefully I'll get that done this quarter. And as soon as it's done, by the way, I'll obviously let you guys know because I am really excited by that. And obviously we're going to war, not going to war, but we've got competition. So I need to up my game. I need to up my game. The old Beverly site was terrible. I know it, but I didn't need to be good because it was, oh, we, we rested on our rolls. We was the only, we were the only game in town. And so now we're not, I need to make sure that we, we get moving again and design a new website. I've got, um, the design doesn't cost 10 grand, but I have got, um, I've got somebody to do the content as well. Somebody to write the content for me because the content sells and it's, I won't go too much into it because there's a, there's a great, there's a great, there's a number of great books, but there's something now that's going around. Not, not, it's a, I suppose it's a new trend. There's feature and benefits. And what we do in the self-storage industry, we list all our features, 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 features. I, I do a podcast about this. Um, but do you know what? Somebody who's storing for six months when they're going traveling um, and you start talking about the feature of 24-hour access, free 24-hour access, there's no benefit there. So you've got to tell the feature and the benefit for the individual customer. There is no point doing feature, 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 feature if there's no benefit for that client, that customer. And so you've got to mirror them up. And so we speak differently to different customers. And that's a whole new sales training that we're going for at the minute. We're educating ourselves. We're reading books about it. And then we're going to implement it in our, in, the, in our sales process. Again, don't let rest on your laurels. You've got to be looking at ways we can improve all the time. And that for me, the sales process, we can always improve. If it's just a little tweak, a percentage here and there, people who move in, then it makes all the difference. And do you know what? That's, that's for me, it's one of the meanings of life is to continually, continuously improve and be better because you just, it feels amazing. It feels good and you're always working, you're always driving, you're always pushing forward. You never, ever, ever reach that goal because you're continuously bettering yourself. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, so we've got one of the best content uh, writers out there, um, somebody in Australia who's doing the content for us and it's going to be all surrounded around, packaged around features and benefits and that's costing a pretty penny as well. But for me, it's not a cost, it's, a, it's an investment. And yeah, like I said, 10, 10 k 10 k website for Beverly. You what? <laughs> and the five, uh, the, the last major minor focus is find a satellite location. Uh, I'll, put, I'll bring these figures to the group to discuss if it makes sense next time around. I'll probably have already before, I think the next meeting's in July, sometimes like 15 for some of that. I'll have probably already, already done a deal um, on that. So I would have brought it to the group, but yeah, I want to find another satellite location. Right, so that is it, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed these quality figures for the people who've been asking about them. Uh, it's been, in a nutshell, it's been a very, very good, strong quarter. Even though the net profit is only sixty-three grand, it in the quarter it doesn't matter because we are growing as a company. There's R and D costs associated to that um, research and development, and we're continuously we're stacking, we're stacking. Um, Friday's episode is all going to be about the innovation stack. You must listen to it, my friends. It's a really, really um, good concept and it's a brilliant book as well. And I'm going to go through it with you on Friday. All right, you all. <laughs> don't know where that came from. Thinking about Ambalad, probably. Right, have a wonderful, wonderful week. And thank you so much. I hope your quarter is going to be fantastic. We're really set for a strong quarter. And I, yeah, I'll try and find the Zoom, but there it is. Uh, yeah, hopefully it's a strong quarter for you guys as well. All right, let's feel lucky. Let's be blessed. Let's appreciate that we're in this self-storage industry because there is literally for my mind no other like well maybe football maybe the football industry maybe the premier league uh, but apart from that there's no other industry like it we are very lucky very blessed my friends and it's a gift that keeps on giving so let's appreciate it and let's let's maximize it we need to deserve to maximize it and we do that by not resting our laurels because so many people right now in self-storage has it too easy and they're going to sit back, they're going to rest on the laurels, but guess what? That's where I'm coming, that's where you're coming, and we're going to make the charge. We are going to keep improving, and we're going to overtake them people. It doesn't matter who it is, but we're coming. We're co I'm coming. I'm definitely coming. 
I'm I'm improving all the time. And uh, yeah, Stormort is going to be a bandwagon that's moving on. We've only got two sites now. This is why I'm, I'm really glad that I've started documenting the process now when we're very, very small. Because when we're very, very big, I can say, hey, look, I've documented the whole process. There you go. That's from where it was with two sites. So here we are with 50. Yes, I said 50. <laughs> hey, big ambitions, big ambitions. Go big or go home, eh? And I want to go big. <laughs> and I don't want to go home yet. I just, I, I'm not doing it for any other reason. It's not the money. I just, I really, really enjoy it. I really enjoy the process. And it just, it lights me up every single day. Like I've, I've got an email to send to somebody now, but I'm so excited to get through and go through. And it's just awesome. So yeah, I, I do feel very, very, very lucky. And I, I keep saying it and I don't apologize for saying it because I am lucky and uh, I feel blessed to be in this industry. And I hope you guys feel the same way as well because there's so many people out there that are struggling and very, very fortunately, this is the industry that's keep on growing. All right, my friends, next week, oh, it might be monthly figures, but next week after that, we do have an interview. We've got two awesome interviews in the bag ready to go for you guys. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. So next week will be the monthly figures and then it'll be the interview. Um, so yeah, I'll just check in, see what date we put down for these interviews. Uh, hacking self storage, Dropbox. Here we go. Um, oh yeah, so I put here 9th of June, John Lindsay, but it might be delayed another week because of the monthly figures. But at the minute it says down John Lindsay next week, but we'll see. It's either next week's either John Lindsay or it will, and I've been introduced by the way, by to some amazing people in different countries in the self-storage industry and listening to them talk about, oh, it's been incredible. So thank you very much for all my network who's introducing me to people and talk to people. We're talking to somebody from Vietnam, Vietnam this next week. I can't wait for that interview. I can't wait to share it with you guys. That won't be coming out for another month yet because we've got loads of episodes lined up. But yeah, so either next week it's John Lindsay or it is uh, monthly figures, whichever. Um, and then the week after, we're the one we don't do. We haven't done. And then the week after that, it'll be Tron. Tron. Tron, the man from Hawaiian conference. I want to go to that conference so much. <laughs> it sounds awesome. So he's going to be telling us all about that and other things in self-storage. All right, my friends, thank you so much. I love, I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, have a great quarter. Bye.